What is up, guys? Jake from OneHive. I am here with the updated version of the base building video. We're going to start at Town Hall 9 and then do a Town Hall 10. Uh, this sort of is coming out of necessity of uh, the popularization of La Lune, Go La Lune, whatever you want to call it, La Valunion, uh, and the need to sort of tweak bases, make them a little bit more anti La Lune. We're going to talk more about that. Uh, but, you know, just what we've learned over since the last video and then that uh, attack style coming out and becoming popular, we needed to update this. So I've got Rex back to help us out. Rex, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Jake. Not much is going on here, but I'm glad to be making another video, um, especially a Town Hall 9 base breakdown video, because this is the beauty about Clash. The game is continually evolving. Uh, each update brings in new army compositions and new strategies, and, and people are, are learning how to use them. And Definitely. so we have to continually change our bases to defend against them. Definitely. It's, it's crazy. Just looking back, you know, I, sometimes I go back and watch some of the older videos, how much the game has changed, how much the bases we run into has changed, the strategy. Uh, it's constantly evolving, so we got to stay one step ahead. That's what we try to do anyways. Also, guys, uh, we are trying yet another method for uh, giving you guys the best sound that we can in these videos. So let me know in the comments if this is better. Hopefully, Rex is coming through uh, even clearer and, and myself as well. So, uh, Rex, get us started. Start talking about... Uh, how we start, how we look at Town Hall 9s now when we get ready to build a base or if we're critiquing a base, uh, what's one of the first things we're, we start to look at? Yeah, sure, Jake. So now that the game has continually evolved, people are becoming a little bit more versed in all kinds of different army compositions. Uh, they're loading up their, their strategies, their execution and deployment of troops, um, but they're planning in various army comps and it's just being so difficult to design a, a very good base nowadays. You have to defend against all your hog-based armies. You have to defend against all your golem-based armies. You have to defend against all your Lelunian-based armies. And so the only way I can describe it is it's impossible to, to, to build an anti-three-star base. I was about to say, uh, for, for a long time now, for months, we've been saying any Town Hall 9 could be three-star. It's never been more true. It's impossible to build a base to defend against everything, but you can make it as hard as possible on them. The, you know, even if you soak up maybe an extra attack or two, it can mean the difference in a war. So you, it doesn't mean we throw our hands up and say, okay, we can't stop it, so we're not going to try to keep designing. We are going to continue to strive for better and better bases, uh, but it is getting very difficult. Yeah, and just from the, the videos that you uploaded from our scrimmage, Shu is a completely maxed Town Hall 9. The only thing that he has not maxed is his BK, and that's level 28. Yeah. Uh, but two levels on a BK will not be significant. And this is coming from uh, Cha. He's number nine um, on our our map, and his heroes are so much lower than shoes. I think they're yeah. like 16 and 19 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they're the things. Yeah, and so for him to be able to three-star this is just just shows you how impossible it is to just, uh, to build a base that's anti three star. Yeah, you're talking about a base that's as maxed as it can possibly get, and a guy that is not anywhere near as powerful as attack as he can get. I mean, he's talking about 10, 11 more levels on top of both of his heroes uh, could be a big difference and still gets the three star. Made it look pretty easy, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and this is going to be quite a long video, so let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go back. And we're gonna we're not gonna spend too much time in the hog based armies and the golem based armies because uh, the most prevalent and I think the strongest army composition that you'll see is Lalunian based, but these still need to be addressed. Well, um, and not much. And the way you all the stuff that we talked about in the first video still plays for hogs. It still that, that all still works. We're gonna go a little bit more detail, uh, but all that information still plays for hogs and golem based armies. Yeah, true. Uh, one of the things that we messed up, I think. Um, on the first video, I just don't recall, is the goal. We, we didn't get too in depth on how to build a, a, a correctly placed double giant bomb set. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So, sure, let's get into it. Yeah. So, just viewing this base, um, she, she was on the opposite team of me. So, when I took the screenshot, I, I couldn't see the, the trap placements. But just looking at this base, I can already tell where the double giant positions are going to be. And the reason for that is, let's go ahead and highlight where the possible positions are. There's one here, 
There's one here. There's one here. Um, I think there's one here. I can't really tell by the corner, but I think that is a, a think spot. Can fit, yeah. Um, there can be potential single giant bomb placements, like right there, right here, right here, right here. But I'm going to go through and eliminate each of these. Okay, so single giant bomb placements. First, this one's eliminated because it's way too accessible. That most likely will be a Tesla because um, if you sent a single hog this way, it would trip the giant bomb, so there would be no uh, sense in placing it there. Right. Uh, so this single giant bomb right here is potentially um, a good one, but again, it has to serve a certain purpose, and this doesn't serve that well of a purpose because whoever um, is going to be attacking this base with hogs is going to throw a heal here anyways, right? Because it's it's covering a good amount of defenses, um, right? A high value and so this like is not that. a very good... Yeah, I agree. Uh, th that's another reason why we can eliminate this one, because... This one is even more high value because you have so many more defensive structures. Mm -hmm. You have that expo where and, and the AD where hogs will be sitting for an extended period of time. So oh, that would be a poor placement for a heal spell as well. Yeah, well, yeah, heal spell is going to be placed there. I think what you're saying here basically is if you're going to do a single bomb location, it needs to be in a location that's protected. Uh, you can't just send one hog and trigger it. The, that the hog group is going to path over it, but make it in a place where they probably didn't want to use a heal anyways. Yeah, and so where single giant bomb, uh, so I guess the best way to describe how an effective single giant bomb base can work is when they need to uh, use heals and it cannot cover the entire base. So mm -hmm. for example, um, let's say there was one heal, here, I'm going to erase all my marks real quick. Okay. Uh, let's just say, for example, there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Um, okay. And there are a cer certain amount of defenses in the second core. So as a Town All 9, you only have four spells. And so e each of these places have to be healed because of those four giant bombs. And so if you had defenses, like high... high um, HP defenses like two expos and maybe a wizard tower right here in the core, mm -hmm. then this could be potentially a good single bomb uh, base because now they don't have a fifth spell to heal the core. Right, right. You, when when the hogs are sitting there beating on the expos, beating on the uh, air defenses, uh, taking up a lot of time, especially if there's some archer towers, some cannons shooting in on them, uh, then, and no heal for them, then they're going to lose some hogs. That can stop the three star. Yeah. And so the reason why single bomb I find them less effective is because whoever is going to be hogging your base is going to be coming in with a kill squad to kill exactly. your Archer Queen anyways. Exactly. So if yeah, so if they can cut off a certain section of the base, then these two giant bombs are completely negated. And so now they have heal spells for the rest. Yeah, when I've shown uh, attacks on the channel of people, when we run into these single bomb bases, I always say, you take out one if you can with, you know, four or five hogs in a CC lure, you know, like, while you're getting the clan castle out. And then if you take out another one with your kill squad going in to get the queen, you've got two of them down, two giant bomb single locations. It's just worthless. Yeah, and I think you're completely right there. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk All about right. what we do, uh, double giant bombs, how you want to uh, pick a good spot, uh, why you put them where you do Okay, so here were the four potential spots for double giant bombs, and now we're going to break down why uh, these are potentially bad. So this, let's start with this location first. The reason why this location is, is a poor location is because when someone is trying to lure, they can mm -hmm. send in five hogs right here, yep. or maybe a little bit more, um, and then uh, these hogs will go here, um, and then you can probably send in another hog and, and trip this really relatively easily. Right, you could send uh, and trip. get the yeah. And so this would not be an optimal place. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about this location here by the expo. And the reason why this one doesn't work um, is because uh, depending on how the hogs are deployed, let's say this archer uh, this wizard tower goes down or whatever. Um, it, actually, it doesn't even have to go down. Sorry. If hogs are deployed from this 
in this end. These mm -hmm. hogs, after this archer tower goes down, they'll pass to this wizard tower, and they'll pass to this archer tower. Right. But after this wizard tower goes down, they're going to pass to this expo, and the way the hogs uh, go, they, they look for empty spaces. And so they'll if there's a giant bomb here, they'll trip one um, without a trip being the second. Right. The only way if in this location that you're going to get a double trigger is basically if they come in from this side and go from, from here across this to this archer tower and then over to here. And that's an unlikely scenario uh, to send their hogs in that way. They could, if they come in from this way, they're going to start heading down the outside almost quicker than they will from there. Uh, it's, it's a very unlikely double bomb trigger is what you're basically saying. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of the biggest errors that I see when we... Are matched up against enemy clans just because you have a two by four space doesn't necessarily make it a a, a good hog or, or sorry a good di double giant bomb place right yeah well and and uh, you know we get accused of cheating a lot because it, it's like you said it's just because it's there and they think oh well there's just like you there's four spots here and you've basically identified where the bombs are simply because of the other areas, even if they're there, they're going to be ineffective. So we don't even have to necessarily worry about them. All we have to do is path our hogs in the right way. And even if they're in a poor location, the hogs are going to trigger them one at a time and we're going to be fine. Yeah. And that's, I couldn't have said it better myself. The way these two remaining spots, if you look at the way the hogs path, uh, they're created. So hogs will always path uh, to these giant bumps. So they'll go in this, um, and depending on which way the hogs go, they'll come across or go across. Right, that's the goal. You want them to come across, not come at it from, a, from the top down and trigger them one at a time. And like you've just drawn out here, uh, if you come in from this side, that's what, that's, that's what the pathing is going to be. They're going to go from cannon to archer tower, and they're going to split. Those, those offset uh, mortars are going to pull them out to the side away from the bombs, and then they're going to come in from, a, from an angle that's beneficial to the defender, so it has a possibility, at least, of getting a double trigger. Yeah, and this, this technique will help you also eliminate uh, Tesla positions. So you know a Tesla cannot be here, because if there was a Tesla there, then it would change up the hog pathing. So yeah, it would go from the here, the here, here, here. Yeah, exactly. And so after they destroy this Tesla, they'll go into this AD and trip a, a giant bomb. Yep. And that's the thing about these, you know, when we're building these bases, you have to understand the attacks. You have to understand the troops that you're going to be hit with uh, to understand how to build a proper base. And again, that's why this giant bomb placement is, is good, because if, if the Tesla's not there, uh, the hogs are going to come in. If they come in from that side, no matter what, uh, the defenses are going to pull them out. If he deploys his hogs from this side, even better. I mean, they're going to they're going to path in this direction. They're going to come to here and they're going to do it on their on their own. Uh, the, the defense for a, a double giant bomb set like that is to come at it from the long side. That's how you want to send your hogs. That's the normal defense because if you come at it from the long side, it, it triggers it tends to trigger them one at a time. But the way Shu has this set up, it's going to pull them. It's going to pull the hogs out, and then they're coming at it from the from the, what I call the short side again. Even if you've pathed them or sent them from the from the long side, hope that made a little bit of sense. Yeah. It made sense to me. Uh, hopefully it does make sense to our viewers. Yeah. And this is the exact same thing over here for this the second site is because uh, regardless of how the hogs path, they have to go across. Um, yeah. Yep, same thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pull them out and then make them try to run across the bombs, not coming at them from the top down. Yeah, and this should be obvious to our viewers, but let's say, for example... Uh, there was an air defense here, but instead of this cannon, there was this storage or a, maybe a hero altar. This no longer becomes a viable mm -hmm. double giant bomb spot because it's completely fake. You know there's not a defense covering it in. And so uh, I've seen this in war and people ask why we knew, know um, that wasn't a double giant spot. And it's because there's a resource building or a non-defensive building there. And so the double giant bomb doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people include, you know, any any two by four space, whether it makes sense or not, they include it. But what they have to realize is, as, as attackers, we we ignore that. We we don't 
that doesn't even draw our attention to to an area that of, like that because our hogs aren't going to go there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think that's the key defense against hog. The second really good um, strategy is placing a hard to reach archer queen. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, yeah, and that'll actually serve uh, defense to multiple different army types. Uh, you should never, by now, if you don't know um, to protect your Archer Queen, then you're probably not focused in war. Right, yeah. People, you know, almost any attack we do, uh, aside from a, uh, like a Penta Hound Walloon attack or something, uh, taking out the Queen's like a step for all of them, basically. Uh, you've got to make it as difficult on the enemy as possible to get to that Queen and take her out. So, protect her all you can before we move on Rex high level walls play a big part of that in my opinion because then it forces them to use a jump spell uh, wall breakers if you've got good compartments compartmentalized uh, jagged edge, edges all that stuff uh, and you've got your walls leveled up it almost makes them bring a jump spell uh, which means they've only got three left oh, that's a good point I, I agree yeah. you have to place the queen so they have to waste a spell to get to her yeah, yeah, definitely. Just like choose base here. You look at this. I mean, how are you going to wall break into there? You can't. I mean, you're going to drop some wall breakers. They're going to bust this wall. The next few are going to bust this wall. The next ones are going to come over here. I mean, it's going to be a mess if you start trying to send wall breakers in there. You've basically got to bring the jump. Um, so before I get into the moon attacks, because that's where we're going to spend the most time, I really briefly want to talk about how to defend against golem based armies. But, uh, by now, if you're a follower of the channel, then you know, go wipe and go wee, we just don't cut it anymore. Because if you have a, a significant amount of compartment like Shu does here, it's automatically defense against Golem because they'll just get stuck. Yeah. But how do you defend against Golo, uh, Golo armies and Goho armies? Well, against Goho, your best defense is placing defenses... Um, with possible spring traps in between. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Goho armies, you require to take two to three golems. And so th that restricts your hog amount to 15 to 20. Absolutely. And, and it, yeah, and if any of these, these 15 to 20 hogs get uh, hit by springs, then... I mean, that's down. They just thin out. Yeah, very, and that's a good point. Uh, even if, let's say, even if you get three or four of your spring traps to flip those hogs, you've at least cut the hog army in half, and it's probably not enough if you've got upgraded defenses. Also, put your spring traps on the opposite side of the base of the queen. You know that the go-ho part of the army is coming in to get your queen, okay? That's what it's made for. They're going to take those golems. They're going to try to take out a certain section of the base. Your queen is absolutely included in that. Focus your spring traps away from that because that's where the hogs are going to be intended to clean up. Yeah, and another point to consider is place them sort of away from where your giant bombs are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that you have like a, a two-fold defense against them because you know the golem. They have to use the golem part to trigger these um these two different uh, areas and so they have to path their hogs yeah. around it right yeah one of them um but so they have to path their ho hogs around it and so that's where you want to use your spring traps absolutely think about when you're when you're setting up don't just say okay i'm putting my spring traps here and there they play a big role in defense against hogs especially like rex said on, on the go -ho army when you can't just bring 30 hogs and okay i'm gonna lose some to spring traps but who cares i've got 30 of them you might only have 15, 16, 18 hogs, something in that range. Uh, if, if 12 of those get flipped, you've got them. There's no way they're going to get that three-star, especially if it happens earlier than later. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and move on to Golo armies and how to defense against the Golo. It's kind of the same idea for when you're defending against Holo, but all four of your air defenses cannot be cored. If... Right. We, we already know like a, a golem based army will reach the core um, regardless of uh, how they deploy it. almost always as long as they know what they're doing will reach a significant amount of the core right right 
Well, and on uh, on the how to go oh. low, go la loon video, we watch uh, Raisin. Uh, one of the bases had four cord air defenses. Her golden part got in there, took out two air defenses, and even dead in the core. So that's that method has just been disproven too many different ways. Yeah. And so um, a base that is weak to go low would have four air defenses staggered towards one side. So let's ignore Shu's base for a second here and say uh, if there are four defense, air defenses that were stacked up on this side, mm -hmm. then it's prone to go low because they can go low this entire section. Mm -hmm. um, and then they can loon the rest on the back end. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so you never want to stagger um, or or stack your air defenses to one side. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen that a lot. Like, oops, sorry about that. Uh, you'll see a a base with like you know they might have them sort of all four like this, you know, spread across the top of a base, and then they'll focus their expos down here, thinking and there are a lot of archer towers down here, thinking that's a good enough air defense. That that doesn't work. You know, if if these are your if that's your air defense, uh, someone's going to just go low and wreck your base. Yeah, the, the other thing is um, once the enemy Archer Queen hits gets into that core, she should not be able to, to snipe the remaining air defenses. So um, on this base, even if the Archer Queen came in from the core, she would not be able to snipe this air defense. Mm -hmm. uh, this this one she can reach, but it's a little bit more difficult. She'll if she if she, whichever direction she goes to, um, she can't reach one or the other. Right. Well, and and what I've noticed too is that. Uh, and I'm sure you'll get to that. Uh, things even like the town hall and definitely things like storages to have in between your air defenses is pretty big now because once the queen makes her way in there and she takes out uh, takes out an air defense, you know, and she's standing here shooting around surrounding buildings, you want whatever surrounding building she's shooting at to be as high HP as possible. That gives all your defenses that much more time to take her out before she locks onto that second air defense. Uh, that's a great point. If this core is stacked with like lower HP buildings, like your spell factory, your barracks, and your collectors, then uh, and I have seen these bases where all the storages are outside to mm -hmm. like suck up more time, but it actually makes your base weaker. Absolutely, absolutely. You've got to have something to hold that queen for it, because you know when we did the Golo How To video, that was the whole thing. All the tanking that you're bringing, all that stuff is just giving your queen time to take out defenses. So you've got to uh, you've got to take that time away from her. You've got to sink it into these worthless storages. The the clan castle is a great one. Uh, the town hall is even a great one. I mean, we're talking about defending against three stars here. We don't care if they two star us. Uh, the town hall is just a tool. Uh, so that's a great one to have in between air defenses to soak up that queen's time while she's trying to uh, get to the second one. Yeah, and then another defense is the new skeleton traps. Try not mm -hmm. to stack all three of your skeleton traps in the same compartment because then they're less effective than, say, a skeleton trap there, there, and there. Because uh, if these skeleton traps hit a unit, it'll aggro your queen. And if she starts banging on a wall, then that raid is done. All right, definitely. Yeah, especially if it's a high level wall like, like Shu's got here, these lava walls. Yeah, these BC levels. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the Lanoon based army. This is this is going to be quite challenging. Yeah, definitely. It's it's tricky, guys. I mean, it'll, what we're telling you are just tips. You can you have to build these bases. You have to test them, tweak them, like we always talked about. Uh, we don't have the magic bullet. That, uh, as you can see in our own scrimmage, a lot of bases got three starred. You know, and we're we're just now getting really proficient with Golalun. Uh, there might be some clans out there that, are, that have been proficient with it. So uh, your base might get three stars still. It's, you just, it's a continual process of cat and mouse. You've got to keep tweaking it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and break down the different types of Lalunian armies. I, I would say there's two primary ones that everyone is using. Mm -hmm. And those, the ones that I'm talking about, I'm going to, I'm going to, I know they're a little bit different, but Let's group them up. Quad Laloon and Penta Laloon are in the same category. Yeah. Just so basically spam. Way, the that mechanics work. Yeah. Uh, there, there can be some precision to it, but they're, um, 
the mechanics and how they work is, is pr pretty much the same yeah. as opposed to Golan Moon. So I, I would break it down into two these two main um, Lalunian armies. Uh, and the, to defend against Quad and Pentalaloon is all about how you path your defenses. So much in the similar manner of how you would path your defenses on a hog attack to direct them into your giant bombs. Mm -hmm. Quad and Pentalaloon has to be pathing your defenses away from your air defenses, if that makes sense. No, it does. You won't... You, you have to remember this. Balloons are... are the, the Lava Hounds are not what, what wins this these type of attacks. It's the Balloons. The, the Lava Hounds are basically just standing there soaking up damage, and if you can keep the Balloons busy too long uh, before they get to those air defenses, uh, your chances of not getting three-star to go up tremendously. So keeping the Balloons, like Rex said, pathing away... From your air defenses, you don't want a direct path. Uh, I dropped my balloons here. Let's say this this mortar was was over here instead, where I've got it circled here. I drop my balloons. They go from the mortar, air defense or archer tower, air defense. It's not you don't want just a straight line. You'll see what shoes done there. It's it's a it's a diversion. It, it draws them away. If he drops it here, there could be some balloons go this direction. Some will go this direction, and then they split on him. They uh, you know, if he has a Tesla here, possibly pop up. You want to draw that away from your air defense. Uh, take as much time as you can. Yeah, and that's a great way to to explain it because you know they're going to be sending a lava hound from this direction, or I mean, any direction, mm -hmm. but. These loons, yes, the attacker is going to be trying to, to 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 really precisely send in loons, but what ends up happening is they start clumping here, um, and you just want them to clump and get go clump away from the air defenses. Well, and this down here at the bottom is a, a wonderful illustration. Look how this archer tower is set forward about two spaces from where this air defense is. So even if you deploy loons straight out from this. They're going to that archer tower, and from there, they're going to that expo. It's closer than that air defense is. Uh, it's a beautiful diversion tactic. To just recess it back in your base a little bit uh, to where this it, once everything clumps up this direction, it's all going away from that air defense. Uh, you could have some split and go that direction, but the the expo is a little bit closer, actually. Yeah, and the same thing on the other side. If someone is trying to deploy a lava hound this direction. Even when they deploy their loons, mo most of their loons, if they maybe if this line, if they deploy it to the right, all, all those loons are going to path towards that camp. Mm -hmm. they, if they deploy it to the left, all of them are going to path towards here. And so, regardless, they're going to have to clump up back towards this archer tower before they move on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you've, we, we've said it in the video, and I, on the uh, war recap, I was talking about it. When you see a really nice uh, La Luna attack, if you'll sort of pause it and look, you've got balloons taking out four, five, maybe six defenses at once. Just like Rex said here on this top setup, he has basically prevented them from taking out more than two at once on this top side. They can draw a line from here to here. They're still targeting this and this. Those are the only two defenses that that line's going to target. Uh, so getting them clumped up early is a benefit uh, because then there's so much wasted effort and time into each bomb drop that it sort of soaks up the effectiveness of the attack, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so I think we pressed that point pretty hard. Let's talk about some other things that you can do to defend against low moon attacks. One, and this is a pretty big one, is to make sure your wizard towers are out of range from your air defenses. Yes, so definitely. This, this wizard tower's attack range cannot cover the air defense because what ends up happening if you do cover it um so i think i think this wizard tower covers this one but let's say there's a lava hound here this wizard tower is going to be shooting that lava hound the entire duration of when the loons are coming in yeah. on the back end and trying to kill whereas if a lava hound deployed from the top side these wizard towers are no longer locked on into this um, 
on the the lava hound, but they start locking on to whatever is closest, the closest group of loons. Right, balloons. So what? We're, so that's that's a perfect example. This one up here. Let's say that this lava hound does come in. It just gets out of range. The wizard tower is no longer focused on it. Uh, he sends his wall of balloons from over here. They focus here, here. Uh, then they start moving into this. Now all of a sudden, this wizard tower is shooting a grouped up. Uh, collection of balloons because they've already bunched up because the way you've set your defenses up now it's focused on that clumped up uh, selection of balloons instead of if this uh, air defense was just one space or two spaces over would be in range the whole time it would be shooting that lava hound never touching the balloons wizard towers are one of your best defenses against balloons because when they clump up uh, an upgraded wizard tower can take out a, a group of level six balloons in four or five shots i mean it'll be over and that can cripple the ray yeah, and to that end, I, I kind of like what Shu does here, is stack your wizard towers. Mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll see he has two on each side, uh, and those serve a purpose. It, it does make the the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock side a little bit weaker and more prone. Um, there's less splash damage out there, but now he has two like a, a better chance to have these two wizard towers take out a, a big group of loons um, with a few attacks each yeah exactly and the one thing i will say I, I like that idea as well but what i don't like and i don't know if we get into this this area where it's tricky it's hard to to do everything that you want to do to defend but i don't like wizard towers being able to be targeted directly by a few balloons because two balloons there two balloons there uh, pretty much those guys are gone if the guy's smart enough to do that. You know, again, we talked about if he deploys from this side, you've got him, you know, uh, in a good position. But if he saves a few balloons uh, for the back end, a couple of balloons down here, it, I, would, I would rather see it protected by one layer of defenses if it's possible. But again, it gets tricky to do because you don't want them too close to your air defenses. You don't want your air defenses too close to each other. Uh, there's a lot of things you want to try to avoid, and it does get hard to build a base that has all these features. Yeah, and you're totally right. The other thing that you want to do is place your expos near, or your high defense buildings. So your expos and your, okay, this is going to be sound a little bit paradoxical, but your high defense units near your era, your wizard towers, because what's going to happen is these grouped up loons will have to spend more time dropping uh, their bombs. And if there's not a significant number of loons, then these wizard towers are going to be attacking those loons for quite a while. Right. Yeah, makes perfect sense. And again, it, uh, these rules are sort of just suggestions. You've got to play with it and find out good traps for those balloons. But the point remains true. If you can hold that balloon, maybe maybe just one more bomb drop, that one extra second, uh, those wizard towers gets off one more shot. It's that butterfly effect. Uh, it could change the whole rate. Yeah, totally. And th there there is a downside to this. Let's say the second type that we're attacking, the Golem loon, if they come in with their Golem and Heroes, the hybrid part of their army from mm -hmm. this direction, and wipe out these Wizard Towers, then those are already gone. Right. Yeah, definitely. And uh, But again, you've got, you know, you got to make sacrifices. You can't defend against everything. But uh, these are just tips to help you. You know, you guys are going to be the ones that build the, uh, the great bases that are really hard to crack. Yeah, um, let's go out uh, and talk about the most common question that I saw in your video uh, from the scrimmage. Uh, you made a comment to not make symmetrical bases, mm -hmm. um, and there is a big reason for that, especially against the quad and pentaloon attack. And the reason is it is too easy uh, to draw out the pathing. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Let's say these, instead of where Shu has his air defenses, let's say, I mean, Shu's is, is semi symmetrical in the way his air defenses are aligned, but let's say the air defenses are in these positions. Okay. Well, this is really easy to um, create a pathway for Penta and Kuala Moon. And the reason for that is because. Regardless of which sides they extended it from, the direction of the Lava Hounds traveling is going to be parallel, or mm -hmm. there's going to be a very easy way to draw the path. Um, let's. 
they can they can draw out a really easy path for their lava hounds to move, and then from there, deploy loons behind them. Right. That's the whole thing. Is that if you can if you know, uh, okay, my lava hound's going to go here. It's going to be drawing fire from this defense, from this defense. As it gets to this point, it's now going to be drawing fire from this archer tower. Then it's very easy just to sort of like we've talked about that counterclockwise or clockwise motion. Just deploy those balloons as those defenses start drawing. Uh, or start locking onto those lava hounds and your balloons are completely safe. Uh, so having it to where I don't know, you know, this, I've got, I don't know when this air defense is going to go down. I don't know, you know, if you send them in from this direction, is this, uh, are balloons coming from here going to go to this archer tower? Or are they going to go this direction? I don't know when they're going to get to this air defense. Uh, it makes things a little more complicated on the planning of the attack. Yeah. And... We've taken this a, a step further in a few of our attacks, um, and you just need to make a, a different pathway for loons and a different pathway for lava hounds because well, I think we've talked about it uh, in our how to la loon videos. The pathway for a lava hound and the pathway for a loon has to align. Mm -hmm. So if you try to create like some kind of misalignment, um, say for example, there's air defenses like this, then it gets a little bit more tricky because if they attack from this side, then there's just there's too many air defenses stacked up, and so they can uh, lock on to one Lava Hound at a time and destroy him really quickly. Right. But if they attack from this end, now it's, 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 it's kind of awkward for them because now these areas have no more protection for their right. rooms. No coverage, right. So basically try to make a base that, uh, that in a, maybe the best way to say it is that the balloons get abandoned. They don't have a tank anymore. Uh, that once that air defense goes down, the lava hound is no longer going to go in a very nice little path, draw fire from everything that he's going to be sending his loons for. Maybe make it a, the base where he gets out of, out of the way and now the balloons have to do their own tanking at least for a short while. They're going to lose more balloons. Again, it's all about just trying to guard that three-star. Uh, maybe it makes it to where it's, you know, we see a lot of 90-plus percent uh, one-star, two-stars on this attack style running out of time. Uh, there's lots of, that's, that's really one of your better defenses is try to make it as hard on them as possible to where they either run out of time or they just don't quite get that last air defense taken down. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say we should go ahead and move on to the Golan room because this is another big area to tackle, and it's just... Like you said earlier, it's impossible and it's just so difficult. You can't protect against everything, but mm -hmm. this you really need to prepare your base for. Yeah, because people that – we've seen it more and more and more. If you let your base – if on a Gola loon, if they can bring – and usually it requires at least mid-level heroes. But if they've got level 15 to 20 heroes, uh, some nice upgraded golems – if you set your base up to where they can send a few golems in, their heroes, a few wizards to back it up, a jump spell, a lightning, and they can take out two air defenses, your queen, your CC, and a few towers with it, you're pretty much toast. Yeah. And so there are, like you said, there are two. One, the biggest defensive unit against Golalun is your archer queen. And it really, the defense is really contingent on how it's uh, how she's placed. But uh, there are two different types of golem loon attacks. Uh, there's one golem attacks, and there's two golem attacks. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a little bit of disagreement here uh, in our clan, but in my eyes, if they use one golem, they're going to most likely take out one air defense for that and the archer queen. Mm -hmm. And if they have used uh, two golems, they need to take out two air defenses and the Archer Queen. And this is one, one area where we, uh, in theory, I agree with what you say, but we sort of have this agreement on this because I've just seen it too many times. Depending on what else they get with that second golem, they don't have to have that second AD. If they take out another, X, maybe an expo pointed up, uh, a wizard tower, a couple of archer towers. I've seen it too many times. Still be successful in a three star. Obviously, I my recommendation would be if you're sinking sixty troop space into it, your goal should be two air defenses. But I've just seen it time and time again. They they don't get that second air defense, and the attack's still successful. 
Yeah, and I think where I've seen it um, unsuccessful is, so if you use two golems, you're going to be taking three Lava Hounds. Mm -hmm. And if these Lava Hounds initially bust too early, um, right. let's say, for example, the four Black Air, um, the Seeking Air Mines, the Black Air Mines, yeah. if they bust two Lava Hounds initially, then there's just not enough... Um, that one last lava hound is just not enough to get through the rest of the base. I would but say that's a good point. On bases where it is, uh, yeah, on bases where it is successful, I uh, these air black air mines have no effect, and and so the lava hounds do the taking. Right, or you got lucky and you came, you know, they have their air mines situated sort of on the air defense that you do take out, or the one you know closest to it. Uh, and so when you send your hot hounds in, they don't get hit with that, and they they last long enough. That's a good point that. And, and, and really the only tricky part about a Lava Hound attack, in my opinion, is is the timing of the Lava Hounds busting. You want them to bust, but not too early. It's sort of, the, that's the one thing. And before we wrap up, we'll get to talking more about air traps, but uh, I don't want to get segued off onto that. Go ahead with what you're talking about with the two golems and the, the one golem. Yeah. Okay. So, as we have already spoken, um, in each of these attacks, you want to make sure that they use one spell. Um, to get to whatever area they need to to access the queen, so that's really important. The second thing is they need to either waste a spell or a significant amount of true space to get the CC lure. So in the initial part of the phase, you want them to waste at least two spells, um, and or and or uh, waste significant army camp space. Right. This is going to be quite overwhelming, so let's just go into talking about the one golem first. Okay. I don't think there is. I don't think it's possible to defend against a one golem four lava hound attack. Um, sorry, let me rephrase. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's impossible to protect an air defense enough so that one golem and their heroes cannot take out. In air defense. Yeah, I would agree. So I if they use one goal of investment, it's going to take it up. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, with any level of heroes uh, and with the proper place jump spell, they can get basically to the core of your base. I mean, you know, that's the bottom line. Unless you've got it, your base really wonky and, and it's not set up to defend against uh, attack from multiple directions. Uh, they can get there. There's no way to stop it. You've just got to make it as hard on them as you can. But a golem tanking for a, a level 15 plus queen, they're going to get your air defense. Yeah, agreed. And so what happens is if they take one golem, that usually means they're taking four lava hounds. And so for the rest of the base, you just need to make sure your traps are loaded. Um, and what we spoke about previously, that they the loon deployment is a lot more difficult. Yeah, definitely. All, all the things that we've... It's a sort of a building process. All the things we talked about of, of setting your... Uh, setting your defenses up to where it sort of paths balloons away from your air defense. That's all, that all still plays, so we're sort of building on top of that here. Yeah, conversely, if they only use one golem, then it makes the CC kill that much more difficult because one golem is just not enough in um, HP to, to, to let the... Well, it can be enough HP, but it's it's really difficult to time it perfectly so that they can dispose of their enemy queen and the CC at the same time, along with the particular defenses they need to take out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the number one step, I would say, is the archer queen positioning. You have to position it so they cannot access the archer queen um, and get two different uh, gold spread. I'm going to kind of clear all this off first. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the way Shu positioned his um, his Archer Queen, it's there's no way, regardless of... I mean, it, it's very difficult to get to two air defenses. Let's say these two air defenses over here. Um, regardless of how you deployed your golems and a jump spell, the jump spell needs to be in here. Uh, it's too difficult to get these two top two air defenses. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's too spread out. Uh, you, the thing about it is, is that your queen gets distracted really easily. She's not going to be focused on an air defense. So if you send her 
sort of this direction. She's going to get that one, but for her to make the voyage to get to this one, not going to happen. Not enough time. Uh, just, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, the the other thing is there's so much trash out here that, like you said, if she gets distracted with this trash or if you don't do your funnel right, or mm -hmm. yeah, especially if you don't do your funnel right, the BK will go shopping. Uh, yeah. and, and so you're going to lose it. Yeah, definitely. Right, so those two defenses are, are pretty good. Uh, the ones on the left, now let's say. Do you think there's a, a good way to deploy two golems and get the, the Archer Queen? I think you could get the two air defenses, but I don't think you're going to get that Archer Queen. She's not going to come over this wall right here. Okay, she's going to stand. This is going to be about as far as she'll stand. Her range is going to come out here, but she's not going to walk to the very edge of her range. Uh, she's going to stand in this segment in my opinion uh, so even if you bring a jump spell to connect these two and you got your golems working in i don't think you get both of those air defenses and the queen i think you can get both air defenses but the queen's going to be left standing yeah and i agree with your assessment um the the other thing that you have to deal with is this bk and that's just going to soak up so much more of your time and your golems hp Yep, absolutely. And like we said, it's, it's all about time. You're buying, the golems are buying your, your hero's time. And, and, and just what Rex said there, that king's going to get involved. He's going to cut your time short. Uh, and again, the whole thing, you've got to get that queen taken out. I mean, if especially if it's a high level queen like Shu's got here. Uh, two air defenses are great, but a queen is actually more deadly to your balloons than an air defense is. Yeah, I agree. All right, moving on to this next section. Let's say these two air defenses. Now, this one is, is also possible, but now look at how much stuff and trash you have to deal with. This is why Shu positioned all of his, all his storages here to make it deceptively um, look like it's the easiest point of attack. Yeah, it's definitely but not, you've got. Yeah, you have so many storages to deal with. Um, uh, on top of that, it's DE storage as well. Uh, the Expo has a significant amount of HP as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is tough. I would not say it's not possible, but I think you're going to have to bring much more than two golems and, and your heroes and a few wizards. This is going to take almost like, you know, you might have to bring four, five, six wizards backing them up. I mean, you need a lot of damage because this is so much HP. Uh, to get actually in there, you can get to the queen and you can get to those two air defenses, but man, it's going to take time and a lot of damage coming out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and reaching this air defenses is is quite difficult because yeah, it is. Uh, the way that your heroes are going to path is going to look something like this, and so for your expecting your heroes to come over here afterwards is just. It doesn't make sense. Well, and your queen, again, we've talked about your queen's going to stop. She's going to take out this dark electric storage. She might even turn around and take out this, this electric storage down here before she ever thinks about targeting that. She's going to take out the, the straight line, you know, whatever's the nearest. Uh, forget defenses. It's just going to be whatever's handy. So I, I agree. I think it's unlikely to get both of those. It would take a massive uh, kill squad. Yeah, I agree. Um, and so that leaves it to this last section these two air defenses and uh during the scrim this is well uh, both attacks came from this direction um and i, I think our, our guys correctly identified um th this is the the right point of attack and even though this town hall is right here the reason why she placed this town hall right there is so uh the enemy queen would waste all their time in attacking this town hall mm -hmm. it, it's just in, it was insufficient if you watch the replays yeah, it just wasn't quite enough. I think uh, relocating maybe this air defense, even just over here. Uh, I know there's a double giant bomb spot there, so you couldn't do it. Uh, but it, just a little too close. It really is. Um, changing the, the position just a little bit, it's not so much about that. It's that something else might be closer at that point. If this air defense was moved over, maybe this is closer for the queen at that point. And she turns around like an idiot and targets it as opposed to the air defense. Little changes like that can make a pretty big impact. Yeah. And so the other thing you have to consider is I, I believe the jump was thrown like right there. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um, you, yeah um, on these attacks, you have to think about the potential of a golem 
focusing and locking on to the air defenses. And that's what I think that's what happened is these golems came in and this golem wiped that one out. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think a golem wiped out this one as well. Uh, probably, maybe not. I think it got one of them. And like but, on, my, on my live attack, my golem single-handedly took out an air defense on, uh, on, in our scrimmage. So it, it can happen. Yeah, and I think that's just relying on your heroes is not might not be enough. Uh, a golem, you have to think about a golem coming in and taking it out as well. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, and, and again, like I said if you come in, you know, I think I think the way it was done is, is busting this wall and then having the jump spell there. And then if this golem takes this out, the next one it might go to is this air defense. And if it gets on it pretty early, you know, when they, they do damage when they split. Uh, it, it can take that out while your queen's sitting over here, even after she takes out the town hall and, and then jump straight on that air defense. Um, and so the point is you have to <laughs> you have to make it so your air defenses are well protected, cannot be ac accessed by two golems, um, so they can't be in the same vicinity. Uh, this is you can see this is a really close, and so that's where uh, it's exploited. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you cannot have an air defense um, exploit uh, exposed. So, like, um, if it, an, an air defense is way out here, then it's too close to the edge, and and so it makes it much easier. Yeah, and as we as we're saying all these rules that we need to try to strive for, you see the dilemma. Uh, it gets hard to build a base with all these characteristics. Uh, this is a very good base. There's nothing bad about this base as good giant bomb uh, pathing for hogs it is difficult to get to those i mean uh the the attack that happened i think it just got the second air defense taken down um it's not a bad base it's just these attacks are overpowered at this point so minor things uh you know he has to tweak this somehow to get that to where you can't take those two air defenses out and the queen and the clan castle that's just too too big a leg up for this overpowered attack yeah. Uh, one thing I want to recommend, and Shu does it in this space, but I think he just put it in... I, I wish he put it in a different position, is uh, if you have Lego walls or better, uh, Lego or Lava, this little moat is an amazing way to create um, a waste of a spell from the enemy because uh, let's say this little moat was right here. Then... By now, you should know approximately the range of your Archer Queen and where she'll jump out. If you can get her to sit behind a wall, absolutely, um, they have to waste a jump spell to access her. Absolutely, uh, you'll because most of the time on this on a Go Laloon, what kills the Queen is that King. He locks on uh, as soon as the as soon as he's close to a Golem and the Queen shoots the Golem, which is what happens ninety percent of the time. All he, the golem yells out, whatever, help me. The king locks onto the queen. But if he has to sit there and beat on a lava wall, that queen might as well just go home because he's not getting through it before he's taken out by defenses. Yeah, and I agree with you. The enemy archer queen, or your, as a, defensively, your archer queen, is going, the first thing that they're going to shoot if the enemy, um, the attacker, deployed correctly is the golem. Mm -hmm. or the Barb King, um, but most likely the Golem. And so she's going to take some time to shoot that Golem and break it down. Uh, and that's where the Barb King comes in and, and just destroys her. And yep. so you have to protect her and have her hide behind a wall. Yep, that's that's a great point. I think that would be a good use of a moat there. Uh, but like we talked about coming from the top side here, I don't think she would ever jump this wall. I really don't. And so you have to sort of know that range. Uh, that's another thing that you have to, might have to test and tweak a little bit in your base. You want to keep her just out of reach of that king, if at all possible. Because, again, she is one of your biggest assets to defend against balloons or, or any, any air attack, any ground attack, really. She's a great defensive tool. You want to protect her the best you can. Yeah, and I agree. Um, one thing I do want to mention, and I see these in the comments right now. Uh, we probably should have made a disclaimer at the beginning. Do not use this base because yeah. <laughs> even though it is a great base, We've already shown the blueprint uh, in yeah. Jake's video of how to, to take and dismantle this base. So um, in the last, uh, in one of our uh, war recaps, uh, someone had copied the previous brace, uh, the base buildup 
our yeah. base design that we made and yeah. said, how did that get three starred? And we already know the technique. We already know the blueprint of how to do three star. And so that just renders your base ineffective. Yeah, don't don't use this base, guys. Don't make your own base. I'm telling you, the base you make will be harder to three star than one someone's already seen. Uh, but in the sake of time, let's move forward. Uh, there's one more thing that we definitely need to talk about and focus on uh, pretty detailed before we wrap up, and that is uh, trap placement, air mines, air bombs. Uh, let's talk about how you want to place those, where you want to put them at. Yeah. Uh, so I think the there's two different traps uh, that you really need to focus on on the Golan Luna attacks and your red air bombs and then your black seeking air mines. Mm. Uh, the black ones are amazing uh, defense against lava hounds. What you want to do is put it in a in a location where it'll pop a lava hound very quickly, um, yep. but not so exposed where a loon can single handedly trigger it. Right. Uh, the, the times that we see uh, bases really do well and defend against uh, lava hound attacks, it seems like the, the lava hounds bust before the people are ready for them to. Uh, then the, those, you know, the, the pups are spread around, but the, the balloons are sort of out there on their own. Uh, nothing to tank for them. Those are the ones that sort of end up not three star. Yeah. And so what we advise here at One Hive is to place two of your black seeking air mines uh, near an air defense. So maybe like right there. A uh, couple of points. You need to make sure that's where the the hybrid attack won't be coming from. So right. if the hybrid attack comes from this direction, these black air mines uh, will no longer be in use because these air defenses are down and lava hounds will not come in this area whatsoever. Right. Even if they're bringing one lava hound, or what you mean, one golem. It's a one golem attack. Think about it that way. In this base, uh, probably either to this uh, air defense or this one, that's going to be your one golem attack because that's where your queen's at. Don't place them there. Use it on the other uh, air defenses. You want your you want those uh, lava hounds to be hitting it and hitting it early to where, oh crap, I just sent in a lava hound there. It's already busted. Now that air defense is, is uh, attacking the balloons that I, that I sent behind that lava hound. Uh, so try to make sure you have at least an idea, okay, they're going to be bringing their hybrid part of the attack here. I'm not going to put my, my black seeking air mines there. That's that's waste. Yeah. Um, and so the reason why we put them next to an air defense is because the lava, we know the lava hound is going to be the first unit to enter that area. And so those are going to be targeted that lava hound. Yeah. I see all the time we do a lot of attacks and there'll be someone with a with an air seeking air mine right there. Uh, the lava hound never trick goes by it. A, a balloon comes out here and it does take out a balloon, but the guy's got 16 more balloons. So it's, it's don't do that. Put it to where you know the lava hound's going to be the one to get to it. Yeah. And another no, no, I would say is don't put your lot, don't, don't put your black air mines all in the same place, like right here, for example, because what's going to happen is the lava hounds are going to come in. The first lava hound, after the, as soon as this air defense is, is down, is going to fly to the next air defense. Well, let's say those two are down. It's going to fly to the next air defense. And this one lava hound is going to absorb all four of those mines. Those mines are going to try to catch up once he lands there. Um, and uh, that four, four of your black air mines will only be wasted on that single lava hound. Well, and another point is, on this scenario you just drew with the lava, uh, the air mines there and the lava hound coming across, this lava hound's probably almost dead as well. When he gets to this point, this air defense has been beaten on him. Uh, it's it's probably at least half-life or less. Uh, so you're, you're wasting the potential of the air mines too. You want them to hit basically full health lava hounds. Uh, so don't don't put them away from your air defenses to where they're going to get hit in transition because that lava hound might almost be dead and it's wasting an air mine. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, so the other defensive air mine that you have are the red air bombs. Uh, these ones are a little bit more effective against balloons. Oh, my colors. Uh, yeah, balloons. And so the way you want to position it is away from your air defenses. But this positioning is, is incredibly challenging because the way uh, the lava hounds explode, lava pups will kind of fly all over. 
mm-hmm. and kind of absorb all those red air bombs. But yeah. you want to try your best to position it in a way that uh, it, the red air mines or the red air bombs target a group of loons. Right. The, the best method would be, or the best result would be uh, when, they're, when they're grouped up. They've already been deployed and they're starting to group up. That's when you want those red bombs to be hitting. Again, like Rex said, it's tricky because those, pub, those lava pups just tend to go all over the base. Uh, but do your best to try to get it in a way where you know the balloons are going to be clumped up. It's not right next to your air defenses, so the, the lava hounds aren't triggering them, uh, that your balloons are, are more likely to pack there. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Uh, that's all that I can think of at this moment. Is there anything else that you man? That's would like pretty much it, guys. And again, we you know, there's no magic bullet. There's no secret base. There's no. This is a very overpowered attack at this point, and it is hard to defend against. These are just some tips that we uh, that make that make your base have a better chance. Not saying that you're not going to build a base with all these tips and get three starred. Uh, it could definitely happen. I mean, again, look at this base that Che three starred here. Oh, shoot, good base, good design. Uh, but do your best. You're going to see it more and more. It's becoming uh, the hog raid of when War, uh, Planet Wars first came out. That's what La Luna is right now. It's the hog riders of, of the past. Uh, so we've got to do our best to defend against it because uh, more people are learning it. It's not as a, and I hate to say this because it kind of is a skilled attack, but it's not as a skillful attack as hogs these days. Uh, people can make more mistakes, still get three stars. So uh, take these tips, build your base, uh, see what happens in war, tweak it, talk about it with your clanmates. Uh, it's it's tough right now, but these are some things that will make it harder uh, for enemies to, to just spam while on your base and, and get the three star. It's going to make it more difficult on them. Uh, anything you want to add before we wrap up, Rex? Um, sorry to bring this up. I'm just going to do a quick point, but loading your CC with various troops. Um, oh, good, good. We, we didn't really touch about it. So... You have to think about what your your base is most inclined to be attacked by. If it's going to be attacked by straight up uh, Pentalamun. Uh, in these cases, we've seen dragons and minions um, in the Klein Castle work a little bit more effectively. But if they're doing a Golan Loon, this dragon minion combo does, is, is not as effective as maybe um, a witch combo. Because uh, if, the, if you take a witch, they have to either lure first or zap it. And zap the the rng the random number generator on zapping um the cc is so difficult to do and if if that yeah. can mess them up on that that's where i mess up on a lot of attacks is missing my zap yeah definitely. so that can be effective as well yeah if that witch doesn't go down then it takes more again you're you're, you're soaking up their time if that witch stays up and keeps bottom those skeletons you have robbed them of the time to to get that section of the base taken out so that's a that's a great point uh it's hard to know what you're going to be attacked with but if you you know if you're running into a clan that you think's got a lot of uh, gonna do a lot of spam while looms, definitely like Rex said, dragon or some, a bunch of minions. Uh, if they're go go while looms, uh, witches are better. I tend to stick with witches uh, just because I you know I feel like you can defend better against those multi uh, hound attacks better than you can the go while loon. I think the go while looms the more. Uh, consistent attack it's going to get your base more times than not if someone knows what they're doing uh so that's my method but again uh, both of them are, are effective yeah uh also if they're attacking you with quad Loon, no lure just complete spam uh, loading your uh, your client castle with all whiz is really effective as well what ends up happening is those whiz will destroy the, those clumps of lava hounds incredibly fast and the pups will explode way too fast yeah, yeah, good point, good point. So play with that as well, is basically what we're saying. Play with the, the CC compositions that you yeah. use. Uh, different things are going to work different or, or better against certain armies. So uh, there's no there's no silver bullet there either. You're just going to have to play with it. Yeah, um, and then the last two very unconventional ways of loading your CC against the Golan Loon would be a Golem or a Lava Hound. And the, the reason for this is... Um, the hybrid part comes in, and then their heroes, their Archer Queen, and their BK are spending way too much time trying to destroy these golem, this golem and the golemites, uh, the lava hound and its pups. But then, if you do load up with these unconventional troops, know that it makes your base that much weaker to every other type of army composition. That's right. That's right. You know, I, I, I said it a long time ago. Uh, this attack style scared me because what do you it, if you if you Get consistent with it, with it, which you guys and, and a lot of people have. Uh, everything you do 
to make your base guard against it makes your base that much weaker to another attack style hogs or something of that variation. Uh, it's a tough it's a tough day for town hall nines uh, to not be three starred by people that know what they're doing. But you got to do your best. Uh, like I said, even if you can soak up one, maybe two extra attacks, it could mean the difference in the war. Yep, and that's all I have this time for real. All right, guys. <laughs> well, we will wrap it up. Uh, I hope if you're still with us, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. We will be coming out with a Town Hall 10 version uh, talking about how to guard against Goat Lone, which is even more important because basically that's the game at Town Hall 10 right now. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until then, Jake and Rex from One High doing our best to help you guys suck less. <laughs>